So good afternoon and uh, welcome to the session that I'm delivering on building a telemetry pipeline with Azure ev Event Hubs, uh, Azure Service Bus, Azure Stream Analytics and SignalR. Just out of interest, how many people were in my session this morning uh, when I was talking about the theory of this? Only a couple, so everybody's pretty new, for new to that. The first session should have really been titled Talking About Building a Telemetry Pipeline, because I was running through the theory, I was running through a lot of uh, PowerPoint slides. I was talking about the background of the technologies uh, that I'm going to be using to create this, uh, this pipeline. And so this is going to be the hands-on stuff where I actually build uh, the stuff. I'm going to be spending a lot more time in the Azure portal configuring services uh, than I am in, in Visual Studio. I also have a challenge, because this is a 60-minute demo. I've got uh, a clock ticking that says 44 minutes and 10 seconds, so that thing's going to be driving me crazy all through the presentation. I've got a deadline uh, to reach in um, 44 minutes' time to see if I can actually get this created. So a bit about myself. Um, I work uh, for a company called Active Solution based in Stockholm, and I've been working with uh, Azure Technologies uh, since about two, 2007, 2008. I started working with a relay service, and I've been an early adopter uh, of Azure. I've been kind of you know, telling companies that they should be moving to the cloud way, way before people uh, wanted to accept that and wanted to start talking about it. And now, we're seeing a, a really big movement in people building hybrid applications, cloud-based applications. I'm an Azure MVP. I've been an MVP for about 12 years, starting out with BizTalk, so I come from a, a message-orientated background. I also do a lot with the community, something called the Global Azure Bootcamp, uh, which I'm going to talk about a bit later on, because it's a great way of spending a, a Saturday learning all kinds of stuff about, uh, about Azure. So the architecture that I'm going to be building is a um, typical sort of uh, architecture that I describe as a, a telemetry pipeline. It's a way of being able to take data from uh, events, um, sorry, take events from devices, devices and things. These things could be mobile apps, they could be cars, they could be um, you know, heating systems, uh, industrial machinery. But it's basically something uh, that is going to be generating what we call a stream uh, of data, uh, a stream of readings like temperature readings, speed readings, um, weather readings, um, vibration readings from industrial that machinery and so on. Somehow we have to get that data into the systems that we're going to be uh, processing and that uh, process uh, is known as ingestion, uh, taking in data. We're not concerned about really processing it, uh, we're not concerned about doing uh, too much analysis in this stage, all we're concerned about is getting the data into some form, some sort of uh, storage where it's securely stored and we can process that data. There's all kinds of uh, developments going on in just this area, the integration between the event source and the ingestion phase. Microsoft is talking about Intelligent Edge and uh, promoting uh, uh, some new technologies that are going to be available in that space. You know, having things like field gateways and all this, uh, this type of stuff. I've simplified things by uh, using a racing game as the event source, which is sending data directly to the event hub in my model. We'll talk about that later on. We then get to the processing stage where we want to take in this big raw stream of telemetry data, do some analysis on it, uh, maybe filter it, maybe um, go from um, you know, 100 requests a minute to one request a minute uh, or so on, and average out data, do some processing. So we've got things like Stream Analytics and we've got Apache Storm, uh, which are complex event processing technologies, allow us uh, to be able to actually uh, process uh, that data and do some basic analysis. We may want to store that data. We may want to generate an archive. We've got uh, a load of different data storage services available on Azure that we can integrate with directly, depending on how we want to, uh, to store that data and how we want to view that data. And then on the analytics side, we've got Power BI, and we've got other tools that can be uh, used to analyze other data once it's, uh, it's stored. So this is basically the, the um, scenario that I'm going to be working with. Technologies I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using the uh, Service Bus Event Hubs. These are massively scalable. Uh, service Bus Event Hubs were prototyped and developed uh, with um, Halo 4 as their actual test application, which was generating, I think it was about 150,000 messages a second, and that went up to about 250,000 messages a second. They're now dealing with customers who are sending millions of messages per second, uh, events per second, through into the Event Hubs. So it does provide that massive scale uh, if you've got the budgets to be able to provision that type of architecture. Stream Analytics is uh, a complex event processing technology that we can provision. It's platform as a service and it uses a SQL based query language. So if you can query tables in a SQL Server database, you can write Stream Analytics queries and start querying live data streams. 
I'm also going to be using service bus brokered messaging, uh, which is uh, a way of being able to do publish subscribe messaging with topics and subscriptions and get messages broadcast off to the receivers. This provides what I call enterprise class mess messaging functionality. We've got dead lettering, we've got uh, message sessions, message expiration, publish subscribe architecture, context-based routing, all that type of stuff that, uh, that we like to deal with with messaging. However, we do have this limit of uh, a scalability target of about 2,000 message operations per second on each topic or on, on each, uh, each queue, which can limit uh, the throughput. It doesn't provide these hundreds of thousands or millions of messages per second like the uh, service bus event hubs will do. I'm also using SignalR. Um, SignalR isn't an Azure technology, so I'm not going to talk in too much detail. But I'm using that to broadcast telemetry events from a web application to a, uh, a client, uh, which is a web browser, which is showing a driver tracker application. The scenario is a real-time driver tracker uh, for a driving game, and this is, uh, if you've seen me presenting here in previous years, I've had this, uh, this racing game that I've integrated with Azor. I originally use it, uh, used it for my Pluralsight courses, and we've used it in a bunch of other, uh, other scenarios as well. This is what I'll be, be demoing uh, a bit later on. This is uh, in more detail what the architecture is going to look like. I'm going to be creating an event hub uh, and one telemetry uh, path, which is going to be the real-time view, which has a stream analytics job, a uh, service bus topic going out to a web application, going out to a browser. And that's going to show the information live in real time on the web page. The other uh, telemetry pipeline uh, is running through Steam Analytics to filter the data. That's then going into Azure Table Storage. And what we'll see is the data in the table. And that data is used by the website to be able to display telemetry graphs. So you can go and look at somebody who's driving faster than you and figure out where they're braking, where they're accelerating, and how fast they're going around certain corners. And that's an actual um, screenshot from the speed uh, of somebody driving around one of the racing tracks. We've actually used this in the Global Azure Boot Camp. We used it in the Global Azure Boot Camp in 2017. Uh, I basically built this, uh, this architecture and we ran it with uh, people all around the world. The Global Azure Boot Camp has been announced for 2018. I took this screenshot this morning and there's 44 confirmed locations, 39 pending, that's about 83. I think we're now up to 85 uh, locations around the world. Last year we had 240 uh, and we're basically way ahead of the curve on locations this year. I think there's about four or five in the Netherlands um, last year. Did anybody attend a Global Azure Boot Camp? Um, it's going to be on Saturday. It's going to be April uh, 21st. <coughs> It's going to be a day where you can attend free and basically do hands-on labs on Azor for the day. And there's going to be plenty of swag and giveaways and all types of stuff. It's a great community event as well because um, we'll be interacting with, uh, with uh, other uh, locations around the world. There's currently just one uh, scheduled for the Netherlands, but I'm guessing there's, there's, going to be, there's going to be more. And this is a screenshot from the racing game that uh, we ran in the Global Azor Bootcamp. You can see the flags of the different nations. I've spent uh, an unhealthy amount of time customizing this game. It started out as the XNA racer. You can see that the, um, the country flag for the country that you're competing with uh, are actually mapped around on the texture uh, of the cars. So uh, we'll be driving, hopefully, with the Netherlands flag today when I do the demo. And this is a screenshot from the Azor portal during uh, the Global Azor Boot Camp. Uh, what we're looking at is the... Um, the graph up there is the events that are running through the event hub, and this is the utilization on the stream analytics jobs in terms of percent uh, for the actual messages that are running through it. So you can see that I've got the driver tracker one there and the, the um, telemetry archive one there running at 84% uh, utilization. Okay, let's start off with this event source. The event source is going to be the driving game. The driving game is going to be sending messages into the event hub using a simple bit of C-sharp code and using the, the service bus uh, SDK. So I won't demo the event source. Uh, it just involves spinning up the driving game, and you'll see that, uh, that, that later on. I'm going to move on to the uh, ingestion phase and start to create the resources that I'm going to need for this, uh, this demo. Now, sometimes it takes um, a couple of minutes for the resources to be provisioned. So what I'm going to focus on is going into the Azure portal and creating the resources that I need. So I always start this demo with an empty uh, resource group in Azure. So this is called Tech Days NL. If we can click it on there, you can see that there's, there's nothing present at the moment. First thing I'm going to need is an event hub. So let's select event hubs. And what I'm really creating is a, a namespace or a container uh, for event hubs. It's not creating the event hub itself. Um, I'll call this Tech Days NL, and that namespace is free. This has to be a globally unique. And I'm going to go for all of the actual default options, and I'm creating it in the Tech Days NL uh, resource group. So let's create that. 
And that's going to be created uh, asynchronously, so I can close these blades on the portal and think about the next resource I'm going to create. I'm going to need two stream analytics jobs, so let's go in here. So let's select a stream analytics job. And this one uh, I'm going to be using for the actual uh, driver tracker. So I'll call it uh, driver tracker. And I'm going to generate that in the tech days NL resource group. Create that. And I'm going to need another stream analytics job. Let's just refresh. You can see that these two have both been created there for the telemetry archive. And this one's going in the same resource group as the others. OK, I'm going to need a storage account to store the data in, where I, I can create a table. So let's go for a, oh, it's got that storage account uh, there. And see if I can create this. I was thinking that wouldn't be uh, available, so I'll try that one. Yep, that one is available. And that's going in in the same resource group. And finally, I'm going to need a service bus namespace where I'm going to be creating my topic. That's fine. And I'm getting these things popping up saying deployment succeeded every uh, every few seconds with the resources that have been created. So it's looking like I've got most of, most of what I need now. Now, if you've ever worked with uh, Azure resource templates, you're probably wondering why I was going through all of that. Uh, you could have a resource template that describes this stuff and just run it, and it, it would it will provision straight away. What I'd like to show with this demo uh, is how quickly uh, we can build this stuff from scratch using the portal, just by using uh, using the portal uh, the portal interface. So the first thing that I need to do, if we jump back to the slides, is to work on the ingestion phase. I need to get the data from the racing game into the event hub so that it can be processed uh, and so that we can start to add the downstream services. So what I'm going to do is to go to the actual um, portal and I need um, security credentials to be able to actually send messages to the event hub. There's two ways to do this. It's kind of like if you're a database developer and um, you're building your first, uh, or you're playing around with um, a SQL Server. One thing you can do is you can use a SQL Server admin account because that has access to all of the databases and all of the resources on that SQL Server. But you don't want to have loads and loads of applications using the SQL Server admin accounts to be able to access uh, access the, the individual databases that they're using. So you generate, uh, you have a lot more granular security model. I don't have time to do that, uh, so I'm using this thing, which is the root manage shared access key. It's kind of like the admin account for this uh, event hub uh, namespace. And this is the um, connection string using the primary key. I'm going to copy that. Go to the code of the racing game and paste in the um, connection string there. So that's in there. That will be able to now connect to the event hub. There is a flag that I need to set here. Send event hub telemetry data to true. So we will actually be sending the data. And then I need an actual event hub uh, for the data to go to. Um, so I'm going to copy telemetry, which is the name of the event hub. I'm going to go back to the portal and I'm going to create an event hub within this event hub namespace. And I'm going to call that telemetry. I'm going to uh, leave all of the default options here and click on create. And it should take, uh, hopefully, uh, a few seconds for that event hub to be uh, provisioned. What I will then have is the um, a way of being able to receive the telemetry data and uh, have that uh, stored in the event hub in, uh, in its buffer. So if I go back to the, um, the portal, it's looking like that has been created. What I should be able to do 
is to run the uh, the racing game. If I just uh, do an F6 to build. Fire this up in the debugger. It takes a while to start. Um, it's basically got to load down all of the high scores and uh, a lot of the, um, the, the replay data from uh, the actual cars that are driven around the track and so on. And it should pop up. And what we're seeing now is it's basically got the lap times from storage. All of the actual ghost cars that you're seeing, they're stored in blob storage. So when you complete a lap, it pushes in um, all of your replay data into blob storage and then just downloads the blob storage. You can see all of the, the driver names and the, uh, the flags of the different countries that are competing, uh, competing in this event. And um, what I'm going to do is to uh, just start driving a lap. Um, for each location, we had a lap key uh, that you, you, you'd use to actually sign on for your particular location. And looking in the database, I can copy uh, this one here, which is the um, lab key for one of the ne Netherlands events. And if I go back to the game and paste this in, I should be able to start a race. And we've got the Netherlands flag on the car. Let's select that, go for this on the beginner track. Drop in my name. And as I'm driving, um, hopefully it will send telemetry data. It won't start throwing at exceptions. And that telemetry data will be then buffered up in the, uh, the event hub. Now, we do have monitoring graphs on the event hub, uh, which will hopefully show us that we are ingesting some data in there. I'm going to exit from that lap because um, hopefully uh, I've sent a few hundred uh, events into the event hub. And we should eventually see those appearing on the graph. If I go in there to telemetry, it will show an overview of uh, the messages that we're receiving. Hopefully. Yeah, so you can see here that we've got these uh, events uh, coming in here. That's um, showing that we, we are receiving, uh, receiving some data there. This is in preview, so the metrics are evolving. Sometimes they're not as uh, real time as we'd like them to see, but you can see it is, um, it is pretty, uh, pretty up to the minute uh, there. Okay, so what I've got now is uh, the racing game sending this uh, data to the event hub. I need now need to think about the processing stage and what I'm going to do with that data. I've got these two streams that I can input. Um, because I'm really pushed for time, I'm going to go for the real-time telemetry first uh, and then configure the archive, because the real-time telemetry is uh, most impressive when we look at it in the demo. So what I need to do is to take the stream analytics job that I've created uh, and I need to configure it to receive events from the event hub and broadcast those events out to a topic that I'm going to be hosting in the Azor uh, service bus. So I created my service bus namespace. Uh, what I haven't created yet is a topic within that service bus namespace. And in the... Um, the site, we're going to be subscribing to messages from a topic which is called Driver Tracker. So going back to the portal, I'm going to create that topic. There's a slight little issue in the, um, the portal that topic doesn't appear as clickable. Uh, I think if I click on Q and then click on back, hopefully topic will come up uh, as being uh, clickable. There it is. Driver Tracker uh, is available, and I'm going to leave it with uh, all of the default options there and click on Create. And it should be very, very quick to create that, uh, that topic that has been created for me. So I do now have a topic. So when I'm... Um, now, the, um, one of the, th the great things about the, um, the stream analytics jobs is that they are really easy to integrate with other Azure technologies. So I work in the integration business for a long time, coming from a, from a BizTalk background. And integration is a pain. Uh, connecting you know, one service to another service, one system to another system, uh, it's, it's painful. Uh, it's very often messy. It's very clean and very easy when we're working with event hubs. I need to take the data or the events from uh, an event hub if an in, as an input to this stream analytics job. So I'm going to go to the inputs, I'm going to click on add, and it's saying what is the input alias going to be? And it's going to be called telemetry. And what type is it? Is it a data stream or is it reference data? It's going to be a data stream and it's coming from an event hub in the current subscription. And I'm going to select 
Tech Days NL. That's uh, the event hub that I've just created. And it's saying the event hub is named Telemetry. Do you want to use the root manage shared access key? And what format are we using? So I'm using JSON. We've got uh, the option of using JSON, CSV, or, or, or Avro. Avro is used by the um, Apache, uh, Apache Storm technologies. I'm going to leave JSON because uh, everybody uses JSON these days. And we can you know, choose the encoding uh, and so on. And I'm going to click on OK. And that's going to uh, analyze the input and test the input for me. Cool. So that's my input. I'm going to configure an output, uh, and this is going to be where we're going to send the data to. There's a lot more options for outputs than we've got with uh, with inputs. Um, I have to remind myself of what the um, what the output should be. Called. So I've got my little cheat sheet here, uh, which actually has the queries, and it takes me a while to actually type out these queries. Um, the output is going to be called driver tracker. So let's um, drop that in as the output alias. Uh, I need to have that correct to get the um, the actual query to work. Now the sync, uh, we've got all kinds of stuff that we can sync to uh, and send the data to. SQL database, blob storage, event hub table storage, service bus queues, topics, Cosmos DB, formerly known as document DB, Power BI, data lake, and Azure functions in preview. So it's really easy to uh, integrate this with these services without having to write any code. I'm going to choose a service bus topic and the service bus namespace is going to be Tech Days NL17 and the topic name is driver tracker using the root manage shared access key json utf8 uh, let's create that output so we've got an input and we've got an output what we need now is the sql based query uh, to be able to select uh, the data filter the data and send the data to the uh, the output so I'm going to copy this chunk of SQL. And I'm going to replace the sort of um, sample with uh, this. And uh, what this query is doing, if we look in, is we're basically, um, if you understand SQL, uh, you pretty much know what this query is doing. We're doing we've got a select statement and we're selecting various things. Driver is the name of the driver. Country code is used to display the appropriate flag on the driver tracker. So if country code is NL, it will, uh, will display your flag. And then uh, we're getting things like the average speed. Um, the X and Y position are important. That's where you are in the gaming world. Because it's a top-down driver tracker, we don't need the Z position, which is how high you are. And then um, if I wanted to expand the driver tracker to show what the players are doing with the accelerator and brakes, like you get when you're watching uh, Formula One, you could actually put that into the website because we are actually sending out the uh, accelerator, brakes, ERS, battery, and uh, lap time in milliseconds. So you could have little, uh, you know, sort of um, displays showing what the drivers are doing with the controls uh, as they're driving around. And we're selecting that into driver tracker, uh, which is our output. So that's going to be going off to the, the topic. It's coming from telemetry, which is the input, and I'm time stamping it by the event time. Each event has, um, within the game, we stamp it with datetime.utc, now when the event is generated. If you don't put that in, uh, then the event timestamp will be when the data is processed, instead of when it is, it was, it is actually, uh, actually generated, which may lead to some uh, inaccuracies if, uh, if the data is getting held, held up in any way. Um, I'm selecting, yeah, uh, the next is the where clause. Um, the where clause I had to put into the demo because somebody actually on the Global Azure uh, boot camp, they started the driving game uh, and then they basically drove halfway around a lap and they just left it there and went off and got coffee and it was running for hours. So when everybody started a driver tracker, there's this one car that was just stuck there uh, on one of the corners doing nothing. So I actually had to go in live and modify the query uh, whilst the game was running just to put in that where clause. So if the lap time, um, it only uh, processes the data if the lap time is less than six minutes. Uh, if it goes above that, if you, uh, you know, um, if the car is just stuck on the track doing nothing, uh, it will just basically disappear uh, from the driver track. We won't, uh, we won't uh, see that again. And then grouping by the country code and the driver, and then this is the important part: uh, a one-second tumbling window. So if you imagine that we've got thousands of people around the world, or hundreds of people playing this game, they're each sending 50 messages a second into the event hub. That's no problem for the event hub. The event hub can basically handle that kind of throughput. Also, stream analytics can handle that kind of throughput. However, 
A web application sending uh, signal R messages out to clients could not handle uh, that type of throughput. So we're saying let's average the telemetry readings for each driver out to one per second. So we'll be sending out one message a second to, uh, via signal R instead of uh, you know, 50 or 100 or 1,000 messages per second. So that's a way of being able to filter um, the telemetry data and provide uh, a different output with, uh, with average, average of, uh, of readings and so on. So let's save this query. And I should be able to go back and, uh, and start this uh, stream analytics job. Now, the start time I've got here, I've got a couple of options. I can start it now, or I can start it at a custom time. If I select to start it at a custom time, then I can choose a, a previous time to start, uh, start it at. I don't have time to go into this in much detail now, but if you're in my previous session, uh, I talked about the event hub being like a, a long buffer. Uh, and it basically buffers up the, the events. So you can maybe store the data for 24 hours, depending on sort of how large, uh, how large your buffer is. So if I was interested in processing all of the data, I could start this 24 hours ago or two hours ago, and it would basically take in all of the old data and process, uh, process that and feed it through the query. Because it's a live driver tracker, it's not really interesting to do that. I want to show where the cars are now. So I'm going to select the start time as, as uh, now, and that's going to start the stream analytics job, which is going to take, uh, take a couple of minutes. Um, the data is then going to go into the website. The website is going to create a topic within the subscription. I think I've got slides on that somewhere. So the website uh, will basically generate uh, a subscription within the, uh, the driver tracker topic. Uh, for each message that's sent to the topic, a copy is sent to each subscription. During the lab at the Global Azo Boot Camp, one of the hands-on labs that you could do was to build uh, your own we uh, driver tracker website. So you built your website, uh, you fired up your website, your website created a connection, uh, a subscription in the topic, and then your website was subscribing to all of these tele telemetry messages. And then anybody who was viewing your website uh, would see the driver tracker and see all of these messages coming out via SignalR to the client. So we've got two layers of publish subscribe here. Uh, one with the messages going into the service bus topic and being broadcast to all of the websites. And then the website will then broadcast uh, the messages out to all of the people uh, who are viewing the website uh, in the browser via uh, SignalR. So I've got the, uh, the website code here, and uh, the website needs to be configured uh, to connect to the service bus. You can see the topic path is driver tracker, uh, but the connection string has not been specified. So I'm going to go back to the uh, resource group and I'm going to select the service bus namespace. And the service bus namespace also has one of these wonderful uh, root managed shared access keys that gives me a connection string that allows me to do anything that I want on the service bus namespace. And so I'm going to paste that into the, the website. We did not do that at the Global Azure Boot Camp. Uh, I'm not going to give all of the attendees uh, a key to the entire service bus namespace. So we did uh, restrict that. Uh, so they just had access to that particular topic. And they couldn't be too destructive uh, with the actual uh, data there. So uh, let's just F6 and see if this is going to build. And I'm going to start uh, the website. I fire that up in Chrome. So what we get is a, a map of the three tracks in the racing game. The green one is the easy, the blue one is the intermediate, and the red one is the, uh, the harder track. Um, if I look in the topic, we should hopefully see that we've created a subscription uh, in that topic. So if I go to this Tech Days NL, I then go to the driver tracker topic, and we'll see that there is a subscription uh, that has been created. So how many people here have uh, played around with topics and subscriptions and messaging? Uh, when you generate a, a subscription, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a class called subscription description. And subscription description allows you to specify a property, uh, which is called auto-delete on idle. Auto-delete on idle is cool, because uh, it means that when um, somebody's stopped receiving messages from that, that subscription, the subscription will automatically uh, delete itself. So when you shut down the website, 10 minutes later, uh, which is a timestamp that I've set, uh, the subscription will disappear. You've got a limit of uh, 2,000 subscriptions in a topic, so I was just crossing my fingers and I'm saying, I hope a lot of people do this lab, but I don't hope uh, a real lot of people do this lab, because if I get more than 2,000 concurrent instances of the website running, it's going to fail uh, when we're generating additional uh, 
subscriptions, but people starting them up and then taking them down during the day isn't a problem because we will auto-delete those, uh, those subscriptions there. So the website is now subscribing to messages. If I go back to the map, this is partly so I can figure out how far I've got through the demo, uh, as well as uh, as well as for you. So I always get lost when I'm uh, doing this. So we have the web app subscribing to the uh, the topic, and we've configured the event hub and the stream analytics job. And hopefully that stream analytics job is is started. So what I need to do now is just copy the um, event code for the Netherlands again. I need to go back to the driving game. I need to run this in debug mode. I need to go back to the driver tracker application. And then when the game pops up, uh, I need to uh, just drive a bit of a, uh, a few corners just so you can see uh, if we are getting the, the real-time data. Okay, so let's move this up here so we can actually see the green track. Paste in the lab key, select that. Start a race, I'm going to select this car and the easy track. Put in my name. So you can see that Alan uh, has appeared now on the driver tracker, um, and you can see the, the real-time nature of this because I'm just coming up to a, a corner, and you'll see as I drive around the corner and when the actual driver tracker goes around the corner, the type of sort of latency that we're getting in the, the driver tracker application. So there is a bit of latency there, uh, but it's, um, it's not too bad. You'll see on the, this corner as well the type of latency that we're getting there. So it's, um, it's maybe one or two seconds, uh, seconds behind. Now this looked really, really impressive when we were running the Global Azure Boot Camp. At one time, there's about 30 or 40 uh, of these uh, cars with all these different uh, locations and uh, different countries actually driving around on the, on the driver track. And it's good fun to watch and good fun to pe for people to be able to build this uh, and then compete and you know, see themselves and see people in other countries actually uh, running, uh, running and competing in this driving game. We'll probably do the same thing at the Global Azure Boot Camp as well this year. So uh, it's definitely worth checking that out if you've got an interest in, uh, in this type of stuff. Okay, so going back to the slides, I've got the uh, telemetry stream working for the real-time driver tracker. That's built. What I need to do now is to work on the archiving. So I'm going to be using table storage as the storage mechanism. Table storage is vastly scalable and it's uh, very, very inexpensive. Um, you can create a storage account and create a table and we have, uh, I've done, we did a customer case where a customer said um, if you have uh, 4 billion entities in uh, an Azure table storage table, do you still get good query performance? This was for uh, a customer with an IoT project with, uh, with sensors uh, to um, sensor uh, environmental data. And they had, uh, their problem was that they were having to delete data uh, after it was um, you know, several years old. And they really wanted to archive their data for as long as possible. So they says, you know, what happens if it's uh, billions and billions of rows of data? Is that going to be a problem? And we, built a, we did build, built a prototype with about, I think it was 4 billion entities and they were getting very, very quick. I think it was about 150, 200 milliseconds queries, uh, you know, querying uh, off these, uh, these actual uh, big, uh, big data sets. So table storage can um, scale fantastically. Uh, it's very inexpensive for its storing and you can get um, really good, uh, good performance with that. So I generated uh, an Azure storage account and um, but what I didn't do was generate a table uh, within that account. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go to the storage account here into the tables section and I'm going to generate a new table called telemetry let's OK that and that's uh, created the table for me. Um, I've got a tool which is called the Azure Storage Explorer. I'm currently connected to the, um, the GAB Racing 2017, the actual data storage account I use for the Global Azure Racing Game, what I'm going to do is to connect to the, uh, the one that I've just created um, for the Tech Days NL, because that's where we're going to be archiving the telemetry data. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the service bus, take the administrator um, name and key, that gives complete control over this, the storage account, and configure this in this, uh, this tool here. So I'm going to uh, connect to an Azure storage account with a name and a key. I'm going to specify the name there, drop back to the portal, take key one, drop back here, 
paste that in and click on next and connect to that. So this is the telemetry table. Uh, what we'll see here is we've got the partition key and the row key uh, data appearing here. We haven't got any uh, any other data. There's no entities uh, present in that table, which is uh, to be expected. I've just uh, created it. So what I need to do now is to have a second stream analytics query that's going to take that data, um, average out the data, and stick it into the table storage table. So going back to the portal, um, what I'm going to do is to go back. I'll just drop on the slide deck as a quick reminder of, of what's going on in this section here, because this is the um, this bit here that I'm building. We've got the same event hub, uh, but I'm generating a second stream analytics query onto that uh, event hub. When you're working with queues, typically if you have two active receivers on a queue and you send a thousand messages to the queue, the messages get load balanced with each active receiver taking 500 messages. So if you send a message to the queue, it will either go to receiver one or to receiver two. It's different with event hubs. You send an event to the event hub and both of the receiving applications will receive it, receive that event. So the, um, it's kind of a bit, bit more like publish, subscribe, but behind the scenes it's using, using buffers uh, and cursors. And I explained that uh, sort of earlier on in my, uh, in my first session. So I've got this stream analytics job created. I haven't configured the input and I haven't configured the output. I've got my table storage table created and uh, what I'm going to do is just to configure this stream analytics job to take the data from the event hub and to stick it into the table storage table. So um, going back to the um, portal, I'm going to need to go back to the um, telemetry archive stream analytics job. And the input is going to be easy to configure. That's just going to be the event hub. That's going to be the same as I did previously. That's going to be called telemetry. And it's a data stream event hub. And it's coming from Tech Days NL. Accepting the other defaults. Let's create that. The output, I'm going to have to get the name right. And this is here, telemetry table, which is the output alias that I'm using. So let's go to the outputs and drop that on. And this is going to be table storage. Um, it's going to be from the current subscription and it's going to be tech days NL17. And it's got the storage account key uh, set for me. The table name is going to be telemetry. That's the only one that I have. Now we've got um, partition key and row key. How many people have built stuff with table storage? So you guys with your hands up, you know that the combination of partition key and row key has to be unique. Also, when you're querying table storage, it's really important to have a, a sensible choice for the partition key and a sensible choice for the row key. Because the data will be grouped by partition and ordered by row key as you're running the queries. So my query is, um, you know, the website coming uh, and saying, give me uh, all of the telemetry data for this particular lap. So I want to use a lap ID as the partition key. Uh, each of the telemetry data for the lap is going to be in one partition. That does two things. Firstly, load balancing. If there's lots of data running through the system, uh, I haven't got uh, hot partitions because the data from the different laps is going out to different partitions and that helps with the storage. Secondly, and most importantly, the effectiveness of the query. Saying, give me all the data in one partition is a very efficient query to do in uh, table storage. Also, I want the data to be ordered by row key and row key is a string data type. And uh, you know, how do I order it? What order do I want? Obviously, for the telemetry graph, I want the data to be in order in which that was created. So lap time in milliseconds is a really good uh, candidate for the row key, because it will be ordered by lap time in milliseconds. However, lap time in milliseconds is an integer. So if I just stick that in the table, uh, then it will be kind of like uh, the zeros and then the ones and the twos. So the, it will be like ones and the thousands and the tens and ten thousands will all be uh, grouped together. So what I need to do is to zero pad the um, lap time in milliseconds. So this is the query that does all that. Um, looking at this one, you can probably understand why I'm not typing this in uh, live. Did I not create that, uh, that output? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, these, these need to be populated, yeah. So I need to specify here uh, what um, value within the actual uh, query is going to be the, the partition key. So lap ID here in my select statement is the field in the query result that is going to be the partition key. And uh, going back to the query row key 
is going to be the value there that I'd specified for row key there. So let's create that. And go back to the query. I'm just going to copy this and paste this into the Stream Analytics job. Five minutes, 33 seconds. Uh, I think I'm going to do it. OK, so let's uh, just zoom in on this, uh, this query a bit. Um, I, I talked a bit about you know that uh, that thing with zero padding the row key. Um, if there are any SQL experts in the room, you can probably do it maybe a bit more efficiently uh, than I was doing. I managed to get that to work by sort of playing around and doing some concatenations and uh, so on. So what I'm doing uh, is basically taking uh, these two strings and doing a bit of concatenations to zero pad the the um, uh, the, the row key, and then uh, I'm using the lap ID, which is a globally unique identifier, as the partition key. I'm not concerned about any order there, you know, uh, we're just selecting all the data from one, one partition, but I want it ordered by lap time in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Then we're selecting the driver, country code, um, average speed, X, Y, and Z position uh, this time, and uh, the sort of averages from the actual um, uh, driver input uh, and so on. Uh, and then also the, the lap time in milliseconds into telemetry table from telemetry. And I'm grouping this by um, a tumbling window. Instead of choosing one second, I was choosing 100 milliseconds here. If it's uh, by one second, uh, it takes you maybe 60 seconds to do a lap. The graph you know, looks really spiky, so I want a much smoother uh, graph on there. But I maybe don't want to go down to um, you know, the actual speed that the telemetry data is being, is being generated. So 10 readings a second seem to produce uh, quite good graphs and not generate too much data. So that's, um, that's what I've uh, specified there on that, uh, that tumbling window there. So I can save the, um, the query there. and go back to the telemetry archive, and I can start this stream analytics job. Now, this is where we can use this custom start time, because I've run this demo a couple of times. I played around with it in the morning, uh, and then uh, you know I drove a, a couple of laps, uh, not a couple of laps, you know, a couple of sort of half laps. One to just show the data going into the event hub, and one when I was actually demoing the driver tracker. So I've already got some data in my event hub. So this is set to 1611. Uh, what I can do is say, well, let's start this at 1511 uh, and see if we can take uh, all of the telemetry data within the buffer and uh, see if that will be populated into the table and click on start. So it's going to take a few seconds for the stream, uh, stream analytics job to start, but hopefully uh, it should pick up that telemetry data that I previously had and that should be populated into the Azure table and we'll hopefully see that if I go here and do a few refreshes. When the job has actually started, we should see data hopefully being uh, being populated here. So whilst that's uh, warming up, uh, 2 minutes 44 seconds, um, I'm just going to go through and just summarize uh, the architecture that I've created and uh, what I've been talking about. So um, this is, I've beaten my record now. I used to think it was great to be able to build this architecture in 60 minutes. Uh, I've managed to actually create this in uh, 45 minutes. I haven't written much code. Uh, I've copy pasted a couple of SQL queries, um, but for creating and uh, you know integrating these services together and being able to build something that's doing something quite sophisticated and that provides a very scalable uh, architecture that can be used on a, a global uh, a global application, it's so quick, uh, it's so productive to be able to leverage these platform as a service components and be able to build uh, build this uh, this type of uh, stuff. Just see if we've got any data coming in the table yet. And I'll check in the portal and see what the status is. Yeah, it's running. Did it just change to running now? Um, yeah. So now it's pulled up this data. Um, one minute, 40 seconds to go. And uh, we're actually showing the uh, the actual uh, data here. So you can see the um, Roki uh, coming down here. You can see it's Alan. It's in the Netherlands. And you can see all of my positions here and uh, lap time in milliseconds and all that type of stuff. You can see what gear I was in at different, uh, different uh, points uh, there. So, what I'm going to do just finally is to summarize the technologies. Um, service bus event hubs, uh, they're great for doing your data ingestion. They're not inexpensive. Uh, you create a service bus event hub and it is consuming resources per the hour, per hour that it is deployed. So don't create a bunch of these and then go away on vacation or go home for the weekend if it's your Azure development account. Uh, I've created all of these in a resource group. So when I finish this demo, I just delete the resource group and, uh, and they're all gone. Um, but that gives you your huge um, um, ingestion uh, capabilities. Um, 
As Clemens Vasters was speaking yesterday, did anybody see Clemens talking? If you speak to Clemens about how this stuff can scale, uh, he just says, you know, it, it can scale uh, to anything, anything you want. If you go with um, a crazy requirement of massive throughput, Microsoft can build uh, that kind of architecture for you. Uh, they'll send you a very, very big invoice, but uh, it will be possible to scale up because of the way that um, it can scale out uh, across multiple uh, environments uh, horizontally. And current customers are using, uh, you know, millions of messages per second through that. Stream analytics, uh, this is really good for complex event processing. Um, it's maybe not as sophisticated as other technologies, but it has such a low uh, level of entry uh, to get into with writing the queries. If you can query a SQL database, you can query stream analytics. And you've seen how easy it is to integrate with the other Azure technologies to get data in from the event hub or send it out to a service bus topic. And then your downstream application can just receive the messages from that service bus topic. Service bus broken messaging, one of my favorite technologies, topics, queues, and subscriptions. Um, that's providing the um, publish subscribe out to the web application. And then finally, we've got SignalR. Haven't talked about SignalR, but that's the technology that's using to push the messages out to the uh, uh, the browser. So worthwhile exploring these uh, these technologies. So if you have a Plural Site account, I've done uh, courses on the Azure Storage, on the uh, brokered messaging, and more recently on the Azure Stream Analytics uh, technologies. I'll be hanging around for questions. Uh, my name's Alan Smith. Um, feel free to come up uh, if you've got any questions and comments about the presentation. Thanks very much, uh, and enjoy the rest of the conference.